two-yard attempt. Lawrence already knocked one through from 29. This one is on the way and good, just the same. Three field goals in this game. Two of them belonging to number two ranked Texas in Laramie on versus. As the world mom and dad can provide the tickets. This was a pretty tough ticket to get at War Memorial Stadium in Laramie, Texas in town. First time they've ever visited. First time since the early 70s they've ever played against Wyoming. It's 6-3 for the Longhorns. Well, the wind is almost in the stadium has died. Outside you can see things blow, but in the stadium the flags are down. You got a chance here if you're Wyoming to get a little something going. Kenny Browder is the deep man for Wyoming. There he is, 16 in the brown and gold. Justin Tucker puts his right foot into it. Sky high. Six yards deep, and Browder has to be encouraged to stay right there. Wyoming has the football. Head coach Dave Christensen tell us his team has a specific way of preparing. Well, we have a system and a plan of, of preparation that we go into each and every week, uh, and, and it won't change. You know, whether we're playing Weaver State, whether we're playing Texas, uh, you know, TCU, uh, Colorado State, uh, and we have a way of, of, of preparing and, uh, uh, that we believe in, and, uh, and we'll do that uh, you know, the same that we can do every week. You could tell he was pretty envious of all that Texas talent yesterday when we met with him. Absolutely. You know, he, he realizes where he's at and what he's got to do. And when you watch Texas walk on the field, there's a swagger, there's confidence, there's a lot of guys that have played a lot of big-time football, and if, you, if you're a coach, you have to be jealous of it. They don't look bulletproof today, though, the guys in the white jerseys. Good play on the edge. Lamar Houston with a strong hand there to make that one-arm tackle. The explosive speed of Lamar Houston is tough for this offensive line to handle right now. After the loss of one, Robert Benjamin, the signal caller, Darius Terry, straight ahead, tied up. 6-3 Longhorns, we hear from Lindy Thaxton. Well, it's been a big transition for this Wyoming team. New head coach, new offensive coordinator, new offensive, as we've talked about. And Christensen says the key to this transition has been the seniors stepping up. He says he told them, guys, I'm not here to win in two or three years. I'm here to win now while you guys are still here. And that's given them a boost. He's definitely given them ownership to some degree, Lindy, and wanting those guys to work their tails off in their final year on campus. You use the right word. He, he said he wanted them to take ownership of this team that just because there was a switchover didn't mean they had lost their places. Benjamin, the junior college transfer, the junior from Phoenix, Arizona. On a three and out here, Wyoming will give the ball back. Big step up by the Texas defense. They win field position, and now they're going to look to extend this lead in a big, big way. Graphic there helping to make Lindy's point. So many new faces in the Wyoming lineup. A line drive punt, juggled by Shipley. Great job just to hang on to the football as he is sworn. Chris Brzezinski was in on the tackle. Wyoming. Having to slow down all of that Texas speed, their defense has been shot. Well, it has been. They've been playing a zone, letting the speed not beat them deep, come underneath, come up, make tackles, and the defensive line, great job of putting pressure on Colt McCoy. They've hit him a few times, haven't got any sacks, but they are constantly around him hitting him. Texas is usually very productive on the road, no matter where they play. Held to just six measly points in the first half. Underneath for Buckner, the sophomore from Allen, Texas. Two great things on that play right there. Buckner putting himself into a void for Colt McCoy to find him. Colt McCoy putting the ball right where Buckner could turn and go upfield with it. McCoy under center quickly on a rollout here. Floats it. That's going to be picked off. Intercepted. 
intercepted by Weston Johnson. Johnson got one last week, and there he took one away from the Heisman runner-up. Did a great job of just falling backwards into the zone and getting right in front of the, that receiver. Good job by Weston Johnson. You take a look at him here. He'll be on your right side. He's running right above the logo there. Watch him. Just slowly drop it back into that window. There's no void there. Colt McCoy has to put that ball where his guy can get it. Not He can't come underneath. That's a bad throw. Or maybe he just never saw Weston. Benjamin firing away for the Cowboys. He picks up Leonard near the 40. Keenan Robinson joining in on the tackle there. The senior ring leader of the linebackers, Weston Johnson, a man who can be extremely physical, picking off McCoy, giving the ball to the Cowboys. As we move later and later into this opening half, Benjamin, with a happy feet now, throws it away. Good job by Keaston Randall getting there. A defensive line breaking through and getting to him. Colt McCoy on the telephone. Chatting, I'm sure, with his offensive coordinator, Greg Davis, who has so much faith in number 12's abilities. Third down and short for the Cowboys. Six minutes to go in the opening half. At the time separating us from a Geico halftime show with Al Roland and Christian at College Football Central. Benjamin's pass defended well there. Earl Thomas extremely productive helping to break it up. Earl Thomas does a great job of closing. Jordan Shipley backtracking to receive this punt as the teams start to trade possessions more and more in this second quarter. McCoy again with a low liner. Shipley trying to get away from it. Says, ah, oh, shucks, I've got to grab it. And then he finds a crease. There's a flag down behind the play. Shipley bringing it ahead to the 33-yard line. On the return, illegal block in the back. On the return, half the distance of the goal, first down, Texas. Crew chief Rich Colin making that assessment. Mac Brown squad. In for a fight today. Texas 6 and Wyoming 3. We'll be back with more in this second quarter in just a few moments. You can't do that. Blocking in the back on Versus. Glued to you. And uh, let me hear your thoughts, big boy, about Notre Dame and Michigan. Well, obviously it's a big game for both programs. Both coaches a little bit on the hot seat, so they've got to get something done. It's a big rivalry that's been removed. It's exciting to watch, I'm sure. Longhorns again, deep in their own territory. D.J. Monroe, the sprinter, diving out near the 13. Chris Pozinski comes flying from the, center, from the safety position, does a great job going inside out, making a big hit. Thanks. As we stay tuned at the half of that Nissan Heisman watch, Heisman contender. A couple of quarterbacks in particular that the guys will be taking a look at. Tim Tebow of Florida, Max Hall of BYU. Second down and six out of the gun. Quickly for Childs. Every week opposite his big brother Marcel. Third down and short for the Longhorns. Vondrell McGee stacked up, needed to get near the 19. Unrhyme with a roadblock there. Line judge marked it pretty quickly. And Texas is going to have to punt. 
I'm a little perplexed by Texas' attack at this point. A lot of lateral, not so much up the field. You've got size and speed on your side. You need to attack a smaller team. John Gold drops deep to punt. David Leonard waiting for it. This one spirals to Leonard. He calls fair catch. He makes it at the Wyoming 33. Folks, we know your passion. This season, college football is on versus.com. We've got everything on the Big 12, Pac-10 and Mountain West, plus highlights, live scores, and the Pick'em Challenge. This college football season, get to know versus.com. Plenty of good reading there once you get there. Track everything down. Robert Benjamin today, over 20 passes already attempted in this opening half, which has 340 left in it. Benjamin throws high, and it's snagged on the outside. Nice catch there, leaping high, Dante Morgan, just back from a team-levied suspension. Coach told us Benjamin learns every play. He's rolled out twice. Both times he did not set up his block. This time did a great job of setting up Stan Sterner on the outside, so he didn't have to take a hit. Five wides in the pattern here. Benjamin looking for that quick slant in and out of the hands of Dante Morgan. Both he and Rick Bowling were suspended for violating team rules in the offseason. Bowling still has to serve this game. He'll be back perhaps next week. Yeah, always tough for a coach, you know, but I, I admire Dave Christensen, or any coach for that matter, when you're faced with a big game, you still do what's right. On third and three. The whole offensive unit looking to the sideline. Eight seconds in the play clock. Benjamin barking signal. Keeps it and gets tripped up. Phenomenal tackle by Keenan Robinson getting in there. He is the only thing that stands between Benjamin and a first down. Does a great job of getting into his legs, taking him down and stopping him short. You watch there, a little zone read. He takes off, plays off the block this Keenan and does a nice job with the tackle. One thing the scouts say about Keenan Robinson is that he can be very physical with you when he gets the opportunity to run in the open field. He can track you down. Wyoming can not afford to keep missing opportunities the way they have. They've had an interception, they've had some calls go their way, and they've yet to capitalize. Defense rules in this first half of college football on versus as this punt drags into the end zone for the touchback. Two minutes and 40 seconds left. The Longhorns in white, knowing that they have Colt McCoy at the controls, and head coach Mac Brown has these thoughts on the demands that are placed upon Colt. He's become a tremendous leader, and, and one of the biggest problems that we've had with him is he's become such a celebrity and role model at the University of Texas that people want him to speak every night. They want him to come to the birthday parties. They want him to come to see their kids. And, and we get so many emails thanking Colt for being the kid that he is and the role model he is because it's changing the lives of kids in our state. And, and regardless of the impact he's had in football, what an amazing impact he's had on people. Colt McCoy, when he took over, Way back in that uh, redshirt freshman year after Vince Young as McCoy sends this one off the knee of the Kirkendall incomplete. Pope said, you know what, I was a stick figure, I was so skinny. Yeah, he's just a little guy, but he did a great job. He's gotten in the weight room, he's put the pounds on. If you're going to go through an entire college career, you're going to take a lot of shots. You've got to have that muscle packed on. He's done a good job of doing that. And that, show builds confidence when you're out on the field. Big numbers as a starter, Glenn, and 12-1 and last year. Now second and 10 with time a-wasting in the opening half. The Geico halftime show seem to come from College Football Central. McCoy over the middle off the hand of the defensive back there to Sean Gibson who was running stride for stride with John Child. That one will haunt to Sean Gibson for the next week until he gets another game in his belt. Wyoming had five interceptions last week. Yeah, they do a good job. They close ground. They get in the throwing lanes. They close windows. But you've got to come up with plays. When you're playing Texas, you can't waste offensive opportunities. You cannot waste chances to get the ball and get a turnover. Cowboys imploring the fans for more noise. Colt 
McCoy. Pressure at his feet. Underneath, he finds McGee. There's a flag down as the Longhorns picked up the first down. Well, I think he probably got some sort of hold in there from the look of it and from who threw the, pla the flag. I'll tell you, Stover and Fletcher and Unrun, these guys are attacking and they're putting pressure on the offensive Holding, line. Holding. 71 offense. Half the distance to the goal. Replay, third down. He doesn't commit penalties. Sergio Kindle, his teammate, says, Paul's the nicest guy in the whole team. Well, you know, he gets himself caught. It's just a, a, a really good job. And any time a defensive tackle goes to the ground, they're going to call the offense. All Chris all did was drive him to the ground. that as a holder but unfortunately the refs all they see is the guy down they call holder third down in a whole bunch 20 yards Longhorns will stay safe with Vondrell McGee he reaches the Texas 20 dragged down by Weston Johnson as Alex Tony looks on Dropping deep for Wyoming. This one is blocked. It trickles towards the sideline. Picked up on the run. Touchdown! A special teams touchdown for Wyoming. Out of the blue. Golly Muhammad picks it up. They got close early. They've done a lot of punt safe. Now they bring the heat and get the block. Absolutely huge turn of events for Wyoming. Extra point try right down the middle. Luke Ruff got in there to block the punt. Golly Muhammad sprints to the sideline. Got it before it went out of bounds. And tiptoed to pay dirt. They run across up the middle. They pull the count away from the cross. That results in the block. And Golly Muhammad there to scoop, scoop it up. You watch here. He goes where the ball's going to be. Not where the kicker's at. Kicker goes right away. That one's going backwards. And some eyes are being opened around the country when they check the out-of-town scoreboard and look to Laramie and see Wyoming on top of Texas, 10-6. Yeah, and you know what they're seeing is they're seeing obviously a hyped up team full of guys that have a lot of pride saying, we're as good as you. They're seeing a team that came out a little flat in Texas, and they're seeing a very, so far, a very good defensive and special team game plan out of the coaches at Wyoming. Dali Mohammed. 18-year-old freshman from St. Joseph, Missouri. They love his speed. An all-city and all-conference performer at Central High School in St. Joseph, Missouri. With a huge play there. And if I'm Texas, what I need to do now is come out in two backs. Come out in one back. I set. I run the ball. I use my big offensive lineman to push you out of the way and start beating you up. Malcolm Williams from the four. Across the 25, nice spin move, got him five more yards. The Texas Longhorns cruising into town to a high elevation of 72-20. And Wyoming has the lead by four. Well, in the first quarter, here comes Golly, and he gets the rough on the kicker, which we didn't really think was a roughing. And it wasn't Golly, excuse me. But then we get a look at the block. Same guy comes flying in rough. And just a great job on his part of adjusting his tack and getting there. Five wide outs for Colt McCoy late in the first half. Scanning the D, he picks up Chipley. He launches himself across the 40. A gain of 12 for Jordan Shipley, who told us yesterday 
that before he suffered through all of his injury problems, he really had gone through his football career in high school and college without any obstacles. He had to believe. He had to go and use his faith. And he has become quite a talent. McCoy for his roommate, Shipley again, inside of Wyoming territory. Here come the horns. Well, you go underneath with speed to Shipley. He gets out of bounds with a smart play. Next time, they come a little deeper and get themselves some big yards. They've got to start, they've got to start using that speed eventually. They've got to start using their size eventually. Shipley had 180 receiving yards last week, a career high in that win against Louisiana Monroe. First and 10 for McCoy, working quickly. He picks up Childs near the 37-yard line. Marcel Gibson, the first man to hit him. Geico halftime show coming up with Al Troutwood, Roland Williams, and Christian Fourier at College Football Central on Versus. East Texas asking for time. Texas still with one timeout remaining. These Longhorn, 568 yards of total offense in their opener. You see McCoy's numbers today, usually deadly accurate. Those numbers on McCoy like the interception was one that he floated to linebacker Weston Johnson. Well, credit Wyoming's defense doing a good job there. They're mixing up the coverages a bit, but what they're really doing is just keeping things in front, driving to the ball, knocking the ball down. You got to credit them so far, but I like what Texas has done on this drive. A sense of urgency. Yeah, there's not much time, and they have to have it. But it's the play calling and the way they're going about it is more impressive. They've been more precise. Yeah, much more. And, and, and knowing exactly where he wants to go to, with the ball, being very, very decisive. Empty backfield. McCoy to the sideline to call for Jordan Shipley. Marcel Gibson was running with him. If you're Texas, you're a little upset because you, you took the time out there to come up with a play and you get yourself an incomplete one that really was well covered. So you know that Wyoming kind of figured what you were doing there after that timeout. Third and short with 40 seconds left to operate for Mac Brown's troop. They are frothing at the mouth in Laramie. The fans are going nuts. Pass complete to Malcolm Williams. A very good-looking physical specimen on the outside for Texas. Big kid, athletic, physical, smart there. Gets the ball, gets a few yards, gets out of bounds. Knows he's got to stop that clock. Gains 11. Moves the chains for Texas. The second-ranked Longhorns in a dust-up in Laramie and trailing at the moment by four. Here comes the blitz. McCoy over the middle. Kirkendall has running room. Slides past one. Stays on his feet. Kirkendall. Touchdown. 25 yards for James Kirkendall. Well, they, they bring pressure, and then they stop instead of just driving in. And when they stop, it allows him to dump the ball to Kirkendall. Now all he's got to beat is one guy, and he, he does a great job of keeping his balance, finding the end zone. That just shows really good athletic ability out of Kirkendall. Guy who's getting more and more run, Glenn, as a slot receiver, more now than ever. Well, like the coach said, they call him the invisible man. He just moves the chains. That's all he does. Longhorns attack on the extra point. Right down the chute from Hunter Lawrence. 13-10 for Texas after this. Well, you take a look at the pressure. They all stop. He runs that drag. There it is. Now, he's got to beat the linebacker. Does a good job inside out right there on Gabe Napton. Keeps his, uh, his balance. Finds the end zone. Get another look here. Right over the middle in the slot. Now watch Napton. Watch his move. Once in, right up inside him. Gets through two defenders in order to make that play. It didn't take Texas very long. 70 yards on that scoring drive in just over 60 seconds. Kirkendall, born in Norfolk, Virginia. He moved to Indiana, then Texas at the age of eight years old. He hailed from Round Rock. And Mac Brown breathes a little sigh of relief as his Longhorn nose back in front. Well, 
you, so much on life is not how you react, it's how you respond. Texas did a great job there. They didn't react poorly. Yeah, they got a, had a bad play. Yeah, they're in a tough situation. What do they do? They respond with a great drive led by their Heisman Trophy candidate to give us a score and go ahead. Longhorns will kick it away. Kenny Browder is deep for Wyoming. This one turns side by side and out of bounds. Wyoming loves this. Gives him the ball at the fort. Gives him a ball. Well, they make a couple plays. They're in field goal position. If I'm Mac Brown, I'm losing my mind right now. Why is my kicker doing that? Checking the flags, Glenn. The wind would be at the Wyoming kicker's back. Colt McCoy, 19 straight games with a touchdown pass. Just adding to that uh, record book in Austin, which may as well just be renamed the McCoy Chronicles. Wyoming plays play it safe here. Head coach Christensen and offensive coordinator Marcus Arroyo elect to kneel there. And now remember this, why, why Texas gets the ball coming out in the third quarter. That is a big switch. So they will have two possessions straight now, a score. Now they're going to get the ball coming out in the third quarter, and that's the most important drive of the game. These Texas Longhorns receiving a scare in Laramie today. Most of the first half dominated by defense. Three early field goals. At one point, it was 6-3 for the Horns. Then a blocked punt touchdown gave Wyoming the lead, only to see Texas respond with a vengeance. In the last two minutes of the half, they burned three. The, the time clock showed you how good they really are at the half we send you down to the sideline here's lindy thaxton and coach you said the biggest unknown coming into this game was their defense what have you learned in the first half well their defense has played well and we haven't played very well offensively lindy we've dropped too many passes we've had a couple of sacks we've had penalties but the worst thing even worse than our offense has been our kicking game their 10 points are off of a young man deciding to fake a punt on his own and a block punt, and we can't do that and win it in any situation what are you going to tell them you need Texas, just keep playing. Have some fun. Uh, Wyoming's playing great. Give them credit. Great setting. We knew they'd play like this. We just thought we'd play a little bit better. So we need to go back and be us. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Joe? Lindy and Mac, we appreciate it. Sellout, capacity crowd. Colt McCoy was 5 for 6 on that touchdown leading drive. 13 10 as we set you now to the Geico halftime show. Here's Al Rowland and Christian. This date 